It is Nasia Michelle, and today we are back with another video. Y'all, before I get go any further, I just want to say thank y'all so much for the love and support. Y'all, I have reached 100 subscribers on YouTube. Actually, right now, I think I'm at like 120, and y'all, I swear, like, it may seem small to y'all, but this brings me so much joy. I just want us to keep growing and growing and really becoming a family and just, you know, enjoying each other. And I... I want this to continue to be a positive channel, but before I did anything else, I just want to really let y'all know from the bottom of my heart, I really do appreciate the support. Today, we're going to actually have a girls talk video. Guys, y'all can listen in if y'all want to too. I don't forget about y'all. But um, yeah, I just want to say thank you so much. Um, don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe. And let's get into this video, y'all. All right, before I got into everything, I just want to make a disclaimer that what I say is not law. This is just girl chat, just some topics. Excuse my hair, y'all. I tried to make it look decent because, I mean, I'm really about to shower and get ready for bed after this video. Okay, so let's see. Hmm, let's see what we're going to start off with. Okay, so we'll just start off with this one. So this one is um, a topic about how to stay positive. Well, question about how to stay positive. So, me personally, things I like to do to um, stay positive is number one, I love to keep positive company. I Anyone who is around me is positive. I keep positive people around me. I love positive energy. Um, I try to exude positive energy myself. And that's really what helped me stay positive, just the people around me, you know. Um, it's really important that the, co the company you keep is really important. So that has a lot to do with a lot. Um, also, I just like to listen, listen and read a lot of encouraging things, positive things, affirmations. I like to meditate. I love to pray. I love God. Um... And that also went along with maintaining happiness. Same goes for that. I love to pray, meditate, um, keep positive people around me, have positive energy. I um, I listen to like these, I'm gonna try to put it in the description box um, below some of the um, manifestations that I listen to on YouTube because they're really good, like affirmations for women, um, godly affirmations, positive affirmations. I love those. Um okay, this one says how um topics on um how to grow your hair and grow your edges. Well, honestly I'm probably not the best person to ask. I just did a keratin treatment to my hair and protein treatment, but um honestly and truly I just try to keep my hands out of my head. I've always had really long hair. Um and really like fine hair. I've never had a perm or anything. But really just, you know, keep your ends trim, protein treatments, find what works for your hair, do research on your hair. Um, whenever I get braids or protective styles, whatever, I make sure I tell the braider to leave my edges out. I don't care if I gotta make 100 baby hairs. Don't braid my edges. Cause I need those, okay? Cause my edges are like true baby hairs. They so fine. Like my hair breaks. My hair breaks easy. So, um, if y'all hear that noise, I have my little cousins with me tonight. They're staying over. And we had like a fun day today. So, or this afternoon. Okay. Okay. This one says um, finding the right person to settle down with. Um, buying expensive clothes versus cheap clothes. So, first we'll do because someone asked, someone else asked about relationships. So I'll just do the, excuse me, cheap clothes versus expensive clothes first. So I love cheap clothes, but I do not like for them to look cheap. So there's a difference than buying something that is cheap 
and looks cheap versus buying something that's cheap and does not look cheap. So, I'm the type of person, you know, I, I love affordable clothing. Um, you don't always have to break the bank to look good, but definitely don't make it look like you didn't break the bank, you know what I'm saying? Um, when it comes to expensive things, because I love expensive things, but the things I like to spend money and invest in are like perfume, jewelry, my hair, of course, and staple pieces like my bags, my belts. So I don't mind spending a thousand plus on a bag or 500 on a belt or whatever the case may be, because if it's a classic staple piece, it'll be in my closet for years. Probably my daughter will even be able to wear it as a vintage designer piece or whatever, you know? So things like that, I don't mind spending money on, but as far as like clothes, I really don't spend a lot of money on my clothes because I'm the type of person that if I take a picture and I don't really want to wear it, again unless i'm wearing it like with a whole nother outfit but i would say it's okay to buy cheap clothes as long as they don't look cheap okay and when i say look cheap y'all know what i mean i hope y'all know what i mean okay so the next one is find the right person to settle down with. And I'm just gonna let that go along with um, the maintaining a good relationship. So find the right person to settle down with. I don't know if that would be more of a male's question than a female question, because I, I did not find my boyfriend. Um, he found me. And the Bible does say a man who finds a wife finds a good thing, so. Um, to my ladies, let him pursue you, sis. And to my fellas, you know, do what needs to be done. But I really feel like just finding or having the right, knowing, I, I'll just use the word knowing, that'd be a, a better term. Knowing when you have the right one is, cause you know, you have ups and downs in relationship, but it's that person that makes you feel like you know things small things that you may go through is worth it even big things that you may go through is worth it you want to have somebody that's more than just a partner to you or a boyfriend or girlfriend to you you, you want a friendship me and my boyfriend we talk about that all the time we were friends first Gene Willie, we were friends first we we hung out and spent time with each other months and months before any type of interaction even a kiss like we were genuinely friends first and i feel like that helps us a lot because at the end of the day even if we have a disagreement or whatever the case may be we can always come back to that foundation of that's my friend you know before anything else that's my friend so that's one thing and as far as just um you know, maintaining a healthy relationship. The first thing I say to maintaining a healthy relationship, and this goes for friendships as well as partnerships or relationship with your significant other, however you want to put it. The first key with having any type of healthy relationship with anyone else is first you have to have a healthy relationship with yourself. If you're not comfortable with yourself, if you don't know who you are, if you can't stand on your own, you you don't need to waste anyone else's time. And that's serious speaking. That's seriously speaking. No matter if it's from a woman's standpoint or a male standpoint, if you are not comfortable with yourself and you don't know who you are as a person you do not need to waste anyone else's time because before before you guys can be happy and healthy together you have to be happy and healthy apart and the reason i say that is because you cannot depend on someone else that's product you can't depend on someone else to make you happy that that's actually a burden to to try to put that on somebody else to you know 
be responsible for your happiness. No one should be responsible for your happiness but you. That's first things first. Next, I would say, I know a lot of people say communication, communication. And I agree, communication is definitely a big part in maintaining a healthy relationship. But, but, Steve Harvey said when you say but, you erase everything else you said in front of it. But, communication is important. But if you, hold on y'all. I hope y'all don't hear those keys because I keep telling them they're too loud and they're not listening. But, um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. So, communication is important, but if you're not willing to receive what the other person is saying, you might as well throw communication out the window because it's not going to work. You can talk, 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 communicate all you want, but successful communication requires one person to receive what the other person is saying. You need to listen, not to respond, but to actually understand what the other person is saying. And also <clears throat> respect and value each other's opinions in relationship. You might not always agree on, on everything your partner says, but you definitely need to respect it. Okay? And then y'all just come to y'all middle ground with that. Because you want me to tell y'all something. When I first met my boyfriend, I... You know, this was almost three years ago. But I was the type, you know, I had been in toxic relationships and things like that. So I'm I'm I was very much used to having my guard up. Having to defend myself, having to be, you know, strong so I can't feel like this person trying to take advantage of me. You know what I'm saying? Take my kindness for weakness type of thing. So when I got with my current boyfriend, you know, and I forgot what it was. But you know, I was basically trying to start an argument. Well, I wasn't really trying to start an argument, but you know, how can I put this? I think I was upset about something and you know, I kind of came off, my tone was, you know, the tone of your voice when you arguing, arguing you know, I'm basically raising my voice and all of this. And he, he told me right then, he said, um, I don't mean to cut you off, but this is what we're not going to do. In this relationship, I'm not about to argue with you. If, if there's something that is bothering you, just talk to me about it. There's no need to argue. There's no need to yell, raise your voice, any of that. Just talk to me. And if you feel like that you two heat in a moment where you can't talk, talk about it then you need to get yourself together and then we come back and revisit the situation because if you're too heated to, to just talk to me about it, then you're not thinking clearly anyway. And I was like, who daddy got kids? Who daddy got kids? He ain't my daddy. But, you know, I was really kind of thrown by that because I'm like, what is this dude talking about? So he, you know, almost three years later, we still don't argue. If we have a disagreement about something, we do disagree. We have a disagreement, we simply talk about it. No one raises their voice. We talk in this tone. Just like I'm talking to y'all, that's how we talk to each other, even when it's something we're upset about. And that's a boundary that was set in the beginning. And not from him, from me. I mean, not from me. It was set by him. So that's something to think about, you know. I really think it definitely has helped my relationship because I have never been in a relationship like this before. And honestly, I have learned a lot. We've grown together, but it's been a learning process. But we, another thing we like to do is watch um, different, listen to different podcasts and watch different stuff. So we can like talk to each other, ask each other questions. We like to have like healthy conversations are just informative conversa conversations with each other to try to make each other think or get each other's feedback about certain things. So, yeah. I can talk about relationships all day, y'all. Um, And when it comes to friendships, because I don't want to leave that out. With your friends, I feel like it's the same thing. You have to respect. As friends, you have to respect each other. And if you get into it, this goes for relationships and friendships. If y'all, you know, having a disagreement, don't go to the internet. 
do not go to the internet because the internet just brings more problems. Handle it between the two of you. There is no way that you should have somebody's number in your phone, but you making subliminals and subtweets and talking about them on the internet and you have their number. Really and truly, if you following them on the internet, there's no way that you should be talking about them on the internet. Just message them, just call them. And a lot of times it could be just a misunderstanding, honestly. Um, let's see. Oh, y'all know what? One, one other thing I want to touch on with that um, maintaining happiness is um social media, since I was just talking about the internet. I see a lot of um, women, girls, you know, we get kind of, it's natural. It's natural to kind of look at someone and think, you know, I, I always, my stomach is my problem area. So I'm sitting here with this pillow. Oh, y'all can't even. You know, I was like, I wish my stomach was flatter. And, you know, I try to go to the gym and eat when I go to the gym and eat right. Lipocavitation, all that kind of stuff. I still have a small pudge. And my mom was like, that's Janetta's girl. Even I had the same thing. My mom, like, that's just something you're going to have that little bit you can't get rid of. But, you know, I feel like the internet can sometimes make women, especially insecure, um, and men as well. Because, you know, we, we look at the internet and we think everybody's living such a perfect life. And they just, everybody going on trips, everybody they own balls and all this kind of stuff y'all do not let that get to y'all because comparison is the thief of joy my mama has always always told me it's growing up do not compare yourself to nobody besides the person you were yesterday because comparison will really steal your joy your race is your journey is not the next person's journey do you understand what I'm saying? What is meant for you may not be meant for the next person, but whatever is for you, it is for you, and it will come, and it will come when the time is right for it to happen for you. You may not be... God may say, I want I want you to make a million dollars. He might tell me, Naja's going to be a million. Now, that may be in my plans. But then I see Keisha right here, and Keisha a million at 22. She on her own boss, and Naja... You know, she's 25, she still has a job, you know, she clocks in and she's not a mean. And I'm like, well, she's 22 and this, no, because Naja mindset might not even be mature enough to have a million dollars. I don't know what she went through to get that million dollars. I don't know how she got that million dollars. I don't know how she became her own, but I don't know her story. So I cannot compare myself to Keisha. It's as simple as that. Just be happy with where you are because if you're never happy with where you are, how are you going to elevate? God is not going to bless you more if you can't even be thankful for what you have right in front of you. And that's tea. That's real tea. The same thing with like your relationship. Don't compare your relationship to your money bag buying Ari a car and you talking about your boyfriend ain't buying you no car. Your boyfriend ain't got money bag type of money. And you ain't Ari. So... Just be happy, you know, be happy with what you have. Try. I'm not saying settle, definitely work towards your goals, but don't compare yourself just because you're not where you feel that the next person is. Just worry about you, because I swear, if you keep your eyes on somebody else's plate, they're gonna be done eating, you're gonna still be hungry. Okay. Oh, self-worth. I love this topic, baby. Self-worth. So, self-worth, <laughs> I feel like that whatever standards you have for yourself are the standards that other people have for you as well. So, if you carry yourself a certain way, if you treat yourself a certain way, other people have no choice but to fall in line. You know, um... That's just simple. Like, I don't even know how, how. What more can I say about that? You, you, you carry yourself like a woman of substance. You treat yourself like a woman of substance. Everybody else don't have no other choice but to fall in line. And that's and that's period. You carry yourself as a man of substance. 
you treat yourself as a man of substance. Everybody else don't have no choice but to fall in line. Okay. This one right here is topics on about being an Aries woman. So of course y'all know I'm an Aries woman. I am a fire sign. Um, I feel like I probably am definitely an Aries to the T. I'm very stubborn, believe it or not. I I definitely, you know, like to have control. I'm not controlling, but I definitely need to feel some sort of control in my life. That's that's um very true. We definitely head of the zodiac signs. And I'm just gonna read what it says. Um an Aries woman is women ruled by the signs of Aries possesses an impeccable sense of style yet despite all of this elegance they remain children at heart although they're independent and outgoing they can be surprisingly naive and trusting this open this openness often leads to disappointment but Aries women quickly bounce back oh y'all my leg caught a cramp in the way I was sitting but I, I really find this true because uh, we definitely got a sense of style, baby. But, um, and we definitely are outgoing, very independent women. My, you know, people I just oftentimes have to tell me like, I got it. My boyfriend tell me a lot of times, let me be a man. And I'll be like, my bad, I'm sorry, bad. You know my bad, you the man. But seriously, like, I don't even be letting that man be the man sometimes because I just have this type of, like I said, I need some sense of control. I have to feel like I can do it on my own. Like, I can do it. My mama said, ever since I've been a little girl, I never wanted nobody to tie my shoes. Like, I can do it. I can do it. I didn't want my mama holding my hand. I can do it. I can do it. I always, I can do it. I can do it. I never, I, I was never a child that wanted my mama to guide me through anything. I was always like, I got it, I can do it, and <laughs> like, that's just me. <laughs> you know, the remain children at heart, I really feel like that is true because I require, I love to be loved on, I love to be baby, and I can be not even trusting because especially not not so much now but when i was younger i really felt like everybody deserved a chance you know if somebody would do something to me i would tell myself they really didn't mean that you know i don't think they meant it, meant it like that a lot of times stuff will go over my head because i don't even take things a certain way or look at things a certain way and my friends would be like you know like nah that wasn't cool well, that's how I used to be. And I'd be like, you know what? I used to be one of them people that didn't even catch shade. You know, when people throw shade at you. I ain't really catch it because I just really didn't think people really had Ill, Ill intent, I guess. Because I, I wasn't raised that way to, to have ill intent to anybody. Even when growing up and my mom would have us clean out our closets every season and, and give our toys um, to other kids or our close of the kids and she will always tell us if, if you are out in public and you see that person that you know you gave your clothes to you see you better not um say that's mine or i gave that to them because when you get home it's me and you so i guess i just never really outside of just being an aries i was never raised that way to to just think people were mean like the world is really mean but you know, I wasn't raised that way. I was raised with a lot of love, so. And definitely, it definitely has led to a lot of disappointment, even from friends, um, from past relationships, because I really feel like people wouldn't do certain things to me that I wouldn't do to them. But that's not true. That is definitely not true. People, people are mean. People will hurt you, and that's just that. But all in all, at the end, it says, airy women, Aries women, quickly bounce back and that's true i feel like i'm a woman that is very resilient i can pretty much take anything and come back from it because at the end of the day i always just tell myself it's light at the end of the summer i i, I give myself a day to cry to be sad about it get it out and then by that night i'm gonna go to sleep and i'm gonna pray about it and that's and that's just it that's just it 
so yeah the Aries women we definitely are a handful we definitely are strong-minded women um I know I keep talking about my boyfriend a lot I'm sorry I love him he's a blessing <laughs> but his mama is an Aries woman too and he um tell me like I think this is why like I'm so drawn to you because you remind me like of my mama in the sense of being like strong independent just you know the type of woman I am I'm trying to go through and see if there are any more topics to talk about um that is pretty much it guys I want to say once again thank y'all for the 100 subscribers I pray that my channel keeps growing I hope y'all enjoyed this video of me just kind of rambling about topics um y'all let me know if y'all like it in the comments below don't forget to comment y'all interact with me I, I be wanting to talk to y'all I like to talk to y'all and follow my Instagram oh excuse me I'm gonna put my Instagram on the screen y'all make sure y'all follow my Instagram talk to me you know I'm a nice person I like to communicate um so yeah don't forget to like comment subscribe i'll see y'all in my next video bye